Thank you so much everyone for sending in all of the questions. Monica and I were just absolutely loving reading all of them. So I've tried to combine a few of them and get, and I will try and get to as many as possible. So first, hi Freddie, I'm confused between the Interceptor and GT. Wanted to know if the Interceptor is just as nimble and a sweet handler like the GT or does the GT have an edge over it? For me, handling's about the same. I think it's the, even the same suspension. So go for the one that you think you would use most. For me personally, I'd probably use the Interceptor more because I know that I could tour Europe on the Interceptor, whereas the Continental GT, more of a weekend toy. So it's just down to personal preference, but both, both handle very well. You can't go wrong with them. Next, how much do you earn with channel sponsors and do you get paid to advertise all of those restaurants and bars? Uh, no, we've never in our lives been paid to advertise any restaurant or bar. And with regards to earning, without giving too much away for individual projects, we, we work with our channel sponsors. We also do a few individual collaborations on Instagram and YouTube. And also, Monica and I have a few properties back in the UK. So it's a bit of a mix of probably eight or nine different revenue streams. Doesn't... <laughs> okay, I like this. Doesn't LARPing around as Steve McQueen and drinking coffees in Tenerife get old? No, I promise you it never gets old. Just, it's 6.30 now and look at where we are. We're on a beach, people running in and out of the sea. It's a glorious life and it never gets old. Honestly, every day I wake up and I cannot believe how lucky we are. It's, it's a dream paradise island. Hi Freddie, in your view, can you use a modern retro for long journeys on A roads and motorways? 100%, 100% you can use it. I actually rode down on a Triumph Speed Triple from London to Croatia a few years ago. You can use a modern classic as every type of bike. It can be a Grand Tour, it can be a commuter. I wouldn't even think for a quarter of a second about that. Absolutely a modern classic can do everything incredibly easily. Next, if you could have your dream garage, Money no object, what would be your three top bikes that you'd have? And second question, will Monica learn to ride so you can adventure on two bikes? Okay, Monica, she's smiling now. Let's get to this first. Monica, I, I would bet money on Monica never doing her biking test. Yeah. And I'm just looking at her reaction yes. now. Yeah, she's, I can almost certainly say Monica will never do it. Maybe no. she'll get a Vespa in the future. Monica, am I right? Yes, you're yeah. right, unfortunately. Um, three motorbikes in the garage. Uh, Triumph Bonneville, Harley Davidson, Soft Tail Deluxe, and the third one, may go some, for something a little bit out there. I think I'd have to have, oh, no. Royal Enfield, Classic 350. I know I've never ridden it, I just know I'd love it. So Classic 350, Bonneville, Soft Tail Deluxe. Okay, next one, Paul. What gave you the confidence to be in front of camera? I think uh, what you've both achieved is phenomenal, but I'd never have the confidence to do it myself. Um, that's an interesting one actually, Paul, because I also have almost no confidence as well. <laughs> I was, I think I said in the last Q&A, I was working as an Ocado delivery driver. Basically, if you're not from the UK, you deliver groceries around the UK. And my route was Kent in the corner of England and Monica, and it really annoyed me. She actually set up an Instagram profile, posting a few pics and stuff like that of me. And uh, I was so angry because I was really embarrassed and shy. And anyway, she did exactly the same for YouTube. One morning we just woke up and she said, right, Freddie, let's go and film YouTube. So Monica keeps pushing me into these situations and throwing me into or out of my comfort zone. So I'm actually quite shy. It's just Monica has forced me into these situations. Mm, but and not anymore. Not anymore. I mean, I love it. It's just I'm naturally quite shy, so I have to be pushed into doing it. I mean, now I'm lucky enough to say that I'm, you know, it's, I couldn't be happier doing this now. I'm just so, so happy. But initially, I was really shy, really shy, and it was difficult. It took me quite a few attempts. And doing the first few YouTube videos, Oh, sometimes Monica and I, we get to our limit with, with, with me because I can just cut, cut <laughs> uh, two hours to film a 30 second segment mm. at the beginning. It was really, really difficult. There were so many days where just a 10 minute video could take eight hours to film because I could just not get my words out at all. Hope that helps. Okay, next one. Mm. 
if you're not going to marry Monica, <laughs> could I possibly be second or even third choice? <laughs> Monica's nodding away, there so yes, go. I'll put you on the list. Yeah. Next one. Hi, Freddie and Monica. Your Fiat 500 is approaching 200,000 miles. How important is it to you that the mileage on a motorbike, um, uh, how important is mileage on a motorbike to you? And is it something that you worry about? Thank you, Chris. Uh, Chris, I love this question. When I'm looking for a car or motorbike, I actually try and pick out the highest mileage models because they're always so cheap. People get so freaked out about mileage. I'm, I'm literally lapping them up. I, I actually put onto Auto Trader over 100,000 miles because I want the highest mileage vehicle because they, vehicles almost never die, whether it's a car or motorbike. People think motorbikes on 30K plus miles, it's high mileage. A Bonneville do 100,000 miles, I'm sure, with no issue at all. Buy a high mileage one, save a gigantic amount of money, 100%, I'm a huge fan of that. Um, Will you try to Ducati Scrambler? Yes, definitely, I really want to. I know I should do. It's a huge gap in the bikes that I've tried. I may get a new Monster soon to try, but Ducati Scrambler, it's, it's not good enough that I haven't tried that. I must try that soon. Have you looked? At, smaller, at the smaller bike market regarding the AJS motorcycles and are you interested in the new BSA when it comes out? Uh, AJS, yes, I will try and test it. I know I tested out the MUD um, and I was really impressed with that. AJS I really want to test out as well and the new BSA Gold Star. Monica I don't think knows this but I actually put my name down on the waiting list for one of those. Oh did you? Just to see. I'm just curious just to see what happens. So I've got emails constantly being updated. The problem is now with the, the Gold Star, oh, that classic 350's come along. So we'll have to see what happens. But yes, I like these smaller models in general. But honestly, Royal Enfield may cause a significant problem for these smaller brands like AJS. Uh, Freddie, I've seen other reviews on the Interceptor comparing it to other bikes like the Bonneville or even some more sporty bikes. Do you think it's fair to compare the Enfield lineup to those brands with how they're designed versus how sports bikes are designed or is that a matter of preference? Well, I actually think it's a huge compliment and it's testament to how well Royal Enfield have done that often, and I'm included, I'm often comparing Royal Enfields to bikes that are twice the price. You know, if you look at the Continental, people often compare it to the Thruxton. It's a huge, huge compliment to Royal Enfield that they're speaking about those in the same sentences. So. I think we as humans like to compare different different bikes or different anything. It's just, it gives us a good benchmark. So I'd take it with a pinch of salt, but um, I think it's a huge, huge compliment that they are being compared. Hi Freddie, are there any particular roads or sections of countries that you'd love to do on a road trip? I've always dreamed about going across the Melau Bridge in France and now I've seen how incredible the Transalpina looks in Romania and wanted to know if there are any places you or Monica want to tick off your dream road trip list. Yes, I want to, just put that there, it's a bit windy, yes, I want to ride, and Monica doesn't know this, she'll look horrified, I want to ride my Bonneville or a Royal Enfield, that Royal Enfield I could beg them to lend me. I want to ride it from London to the Royal Enfield factory and I want to have a tour of the Royal Enfield factory on a bike, I guess Royal Enfield, that I've ridden all the way from London. I would love to try that. Where is that? Uh, the, oh sorry, that's in India. So, some, so London <laughs> to India, just to confirm, yeah, the Royal Enfield factory in <laughs> India itself. I'd love to do that. One day I hope to do that. Um, Freddie, if you could own three bikes, wow. what bike this is good new or used would you select in the following price tags great british pounds 6k 9k and 16k okay 6k i would say bonneville but let, let's mix it up a bit um it has to be interceptor i have to throw that in there interceptor for under 9k uh, under 6k under 9k i would go with a triumph speedmaster under 16k, I would go with a Harley Davidson Softail Deluxe. Sorry, you may notice I now have one more button down that. Monica thought I looked like a 1980s gigolo. So, Daniel Nicholson, where, where did you get the jacket? 
Uh, that is a Frank Thomas patrol jacket, and Daniel, I'm glad that you asked, because that is one of my favourite jackets. So it's hard with Monica being a fool behind the camera. Uh, that's one of my favourite jackets, Daniel. Frank Thomas, completely ignore the website. The marketing is the worst marketing I've ever seen, and the website looks like it's from the late 1980s, but... The Frank Thomas Patrol jacket is actually very good. I've had mine 11 years, first jacket I ever bought, and they will last a lifetime, highly recommended. Andrew, hi guys. If you had to choose another decade to be around in, instead of the 2020s, what would you choose? 1960s California, yeah, 100%. I, I agree with that. Yeah, Monica's yeah, agreeing yeah. with me. Um, the style, the cars, that is just the glorious of the USA. 100% would be 1960s USA. Hey, Freddie. What do you like most about Tenerife and any tips for an extended stay? Yes, okay, um, what do we like? Well, th this sums it up perfectly. It genuinely is 23 degrees every single day of the year. It's, it's outdoor lifestyle at its best. It just means in reality that what does outdoor lifestyle mean? It means that we want to be outside all the time. So whereas in the UK in the winter, you're desperately trying to run inside as quickly as you can here, we will be outside all the time. We'll go for coffee in the morning and then, for example, go for a bike ride, come back, go for a swim, and then we don't want to be at home. We want to be out all of the time. So that's, for me, what quality of life is. And I would recommend you staying in between um, probably El Medano and up to Los Gigantes, the southernmost bit, because that's where you get the guaranteed dry weather. Anywhere else, and you get a good chunk of rain. Stay away from the touristy areas, and you'll get half price property deals. A good place to look is Airbnb, and get in touch with the owners and see if you can get a long term discount. Mm -hmm. Have you heard that the Danish motorcycle brand Nimbus Motorcycles are going back into business and making electric motorcycles? What are your thoughts on this? Yes, they went out of business in 1960. 1960? I think it was about 1960. They haven't been around for ages. If they make an electric motorcycle that's got that classic vibe that they used to have, I'd be so happy because for me, yeah, it's great. You know, you've got the Harley Davidson Livewire and stuff like that, but it doesn't doesn't tug at the heartstrings. I would love to see a mainstream classic motorcycle. Think mainstream Triumph Bonneville, for example. So yes, if this Danish company comes along and they do these old school electric motorbikes, I think that's a brilliant thing. They look great, the old ones as well. Um, Freddie, have you ever tried the Honda with a DCT? And what's your opinion? No, never tried it, unfortunately, but everyone seems to rave about that DCT gearbox. Is Tenerife big enough for an avid motorcyclist to stay interested? Absolutely, I can say this categorically, yes. I could probably spend a lifetime here and still not lose any enthusiasm for these roads. There are more than enough roads. Um, the variety you can be at the top of a volcano with snow, you can be the lush forests of the northeast, you can be down at the desert like south and everything in between. You will never get bored. It's heaven for a motorcyclist. Next. Freddie, as a 24 year old, direct access. What kinds of bikes would you recommend for a first bike? What engine size and brands, etc.? I want something cool and fun, but not dangerous or that encourages stupidity. Um, I'm sure there are plenty of people just like me. Yes, 100%. If I were going back, these are the bikes I'd be looking at. Um, Royal Enfield Interceptor, Triumph Bonneville, Kawasaki W800, Harley Davidson Sportster 800. Um, yeah, even the Honda Rebel 500 actually. Look at these kinds of bikes. They don't encourage stupidity and you will have a brilliant time on them. And for me, they will look incredibly cool. So have a look at some of those. How did you get into biking and bike marketing? Well, that's interesting. So I got into biking when I was 25 years old and I was in a recruitment job, worked in Hammersmith in London and I would walk into work every day and I hated that job so much and I was so useless at it. And I remember thinking just one day, walking into work thinking, God, I was just so bored, so bored with this job. Uh, I need some excitement. And then all of a sudden I, I decided I was addicted to motorcycles and it's all I could think about. So I then went from having that thought in my mind to four days later booking my direct access course, the quick course, and I passed within a month and a half. I passed second time and I've just become completely addicted since then. So that's how I got into it. And with regards to marketing, the weird thing is, I know this sounds kind of silly, um, but 
we, we, Monica and I, didn't even think of it as marketing. And Monica started it. She just started posting photos of trips and, you know, motorbikes and stuff like that. But it just started with posting a few photos on Instagram with no huge plans of where we wanted it to go. But it kind of just naturally progressed. And that's how it all began. All thanks to Monica. Simon, uh, how do you manage to spend so much time in Tenerife? Is it beyond 90 days and 180? Also, what equipment do you use? The sound quality and picture quality is superb. Thank you, Simon. I'm so lucky. So I, my dad was born in Northern Ireland. So because of him, because he was born there, I've got an Irish passport. If I didn't have that Irish passport, four months ago, we would have had to leave Tenerife. That's a scary thought, four months ago. And Monica's Lithuanian. Uh, camera gear that we use, we use road microphones uh, these are a game changer because i used to have so many complaints at the atrocious sound quality and then for the camera monica uses an iphone 13 pro max um, freddie can you do a beginner's guide for idiots for the whole process cost tips and talking uh, and taking the motorcycle test from the theory lessons mod one mod two also are you related to dermot o'leary so no, I'm not related to Dermot O'Leary, but um, the, the test cost me £650 to go from never having ridden a bike before to passing my full test. I booked a direct access, so what you do, you take your theory test. Once you've passed your theory test, you book the one week direct access. Once you've booked that, the direct access company will, within that five day course, have booked your module one and your module two and also your CBT. So CBT will be on the first day, but all you need to do, pass your theory, book your direct access, that's all you need. Bank on 650 and then bank on about 150 pounds every time you fail your test. That's what I had to do when I failed first time. Good luck. Um, Freddie, best second-hand motorcycle for your buck within the Cafe Racer custom retro realm. Broke, uh, broke AF gang, rise up. This is, this is a, a really good question actually, because if you're looking at these kinds of bikes, the cafe racers, you could be looking at, you know, the likes of a Thruxton and maybe you're lucky to get one for under 5K or something like that. Or you could be looking at the Kawasaki W800s, but they're all gonna be hard to find at a good price. You may be best going onto eBay and having a look at a modified Japanese bike, probably in reality pre-2005 or something like that. eBay will be your best, your best shot because you can often find some really nicely done projects. And I reckon you can find a decent Cafe Racer project for maybe under two, two and a half K. So go onto eBay for that, that'll be best. One other thing to consider, check um check the finance for the royal enfield continental because at 6k for that bike you'll get a very very good finance off you may be able to get it for 120 a month so have a look at that tell us about your bike history what was your first motorcycle first motorcycle 1993 suzuki uh no nine it was a 2005 honda cb500f bought it for 1850 pounds sold it two weeks later for 1000 pounds or something like that because I wanted a sports bike I then bought a Honda RF 600 which I later realized wasn't actually a real sports bike sold that uh, bought it for 790 pounds sold it for 230 then I moved on to a Triumph Speed Triple I had that for four or five years I bought that for 4100 pounds I sold that for 1800 or so or maybe 2100 pounds uh, sold that because business was going bad and then I bought a Suzuki Bandit for 790 pounds and then after that I bought the Triumph Bonneville for 3650 pounds uh, Bonneville is the only bike I've had that really feels like me though. Okay, next. Tips uh, to learn to ride a motorcycle. Greetings. Yeah, practice more than anything, more than doing a one week intense course, anything like that. Practice on the road, just you by yourself going out learning how to use a bike is for me more valuable um, than, than anything else. Obviously you need to do the official stuff and that's great, but then just get out on the bike yourself. Next, hey man, wanted to ask uh, what Royal Enfield bike is the best overall regardless of category based on your experience with bikes? Uh, the Interceptor, for me, it's, it's an incredible all-rounder of a bike. It can do everything. The engine's beautiful. Uh, it's very comfortable. I'm a huge fan and I 
Yeah, you know, I always think about getting one, maybe. I really like it. Uh, hi, Freddie. If you are asked to choose between Honda and Royal Enfield, which machine do you choose? I would go for the Royal Enfield just because I really love it. I just love everything that Royal Enfield represents as a company. I'm a huge fan of them. Uh, so for me, Royal Enfield is the brand I feel more of an affinity to. I think um, you love them so much that people think you may be ambassador. It's or true. Being paid to, you know, to promote them. It's true. I think some people do think I'm yeah. a Royal Enfield ambassador, but I'm not at all. I just love them so much. In fact, even all the bikes out here, you know, Royal Enfield don't give me any of them. I actually yeah. go and get them from rental companies and stuff. I've just, after riding a lot of them, I, I really have fallen in love with them. And I just love everything they represent. They may be my favorite brand, actually. Next. Uh, what can you stare at for ages and never get old or fails to take your breath away? Um, sunsets into the ocean, that's really nice. Classic car, actually the Fiat Cinquecento from the, from, the 50, from the 60s, that's an amazing thing to look at all day. But something like this, I mean... Excuse me? What? What about me? Oh, <laughs> God, sorry. Oh my God, that's rude. Monica as well. And Monica, cut that. No, you're going to keep it on, you know, Monica. <laughs> and Monica as well. Okay, Monica re-edit that. Monica and Sunsets and Fiat Cinquecento. Monica in the Sunset. Yeah, exactly. Monica in the Sunset, <laughs> sitting in a Fiat Cinquecento. <laughs> Next one. What's your favourite song, band or artist? Uh, oh, God, I don't really have Elvis. a favourite. Elvis. Yeah, I do love Elvis. I really love Elvis. I love the Bee Gees as well. And... Oh, I do like ABBA as well. Is that ridiculous? I've been listening to all of those three on repeat every evening this week. Yeah. Uh, what couldn't you do within life? Not who, but what? Well, when, when my last business was my recruitment company was going badly, I had to sell my Triumph Speed Triple, and I thought, right, that's it for biking, I'm done now. Um, and one week later, or two weeks later, I had to go out and buy a Suzuki Bandit for about £790 because I realised I missed it so much. And that's how I know that's the one thing I couldn't live without, a motorbike. And I really do mean that 100%. I don't care what type of motorbike it is, I just need two wheels. And yeah, 100%, mean that very genuinely. What's your advice for someone who feels inspired by your channel? It's very kind of you. Um, that wants to start a channel similar to yours in the north of Spain. Uh, best advice I can give, just do it, don't yeah. overthink it. That's yeah. it, just honestly do it. Uh, everything will fall into place after that. Um, any plans for meet and greet gathering when you're back in the UK? I might even buy you a brew. Thank you so much. It's very kind of you. I should try that. I yeah. actually wanted to do it back in August before mm -hmm. we left and I just never got round to it. But yeah, I will try and do that. It's a really nice idea. Uh, what's stopping you from switching your Bonneville to another motorcycle, given how passionate you seem to be about a lot of, a lot of other motorcycles? Uh, purely because I love my Bonneville so much, and I've been in the position before where I've overstretched myself. Uh, I, I went out and bought a, a second-hand Jaguar, um, and I really overstretched and actually ruined my life for about a year because I was in such bad financial position. So now I'm really cautious, you know, just about pushing myself or overextending myself too much. That's probably the reason. Love the Bonneville, don't want to overstretch. I'm in an okay position now and I just want to enjoy every day with it. Next, what other bikes at the time did you consider before buying the Bonneville you have now and what did the deal to make you get the Bonneville? Um, I liked the Harleys, they were too expensive. I liked the Ducati, uh, I quite liked the Ducati Monster, but it was too sporty. Um, it really was actually only the Bonneville that I was looking at in the end. In the end, there was nothing quite like it for me, so it was a fairly easy choice. The one I bought, I bought it on eBay and I bought it in the winter, so I got quite a good deal for it, and it was in original condition, and it was black. So it had to be under 4K because my loan, uh, the loan I got from Ratesetter, they agreed a 4K loan, so it had to be under that, um, and I was delighted to get one for much cheaper than that. Freddie, blacked out and moody, or chrome-covered bling? My old Triumph Bonneville took me three hours to clean after a ride because I had to clean every spoke. The toothbrush, never again, finally. Please stop calling it a kickstart. It's a kickstand. Oh, sorry, I didn't get it wrong there. Please stop calling a kickstart a kickstand. 
apologies. I know I don't like it doing that. Something wrong with me. <laughs> um, weirdly, I'm starting to go from all blacked out. I went from having a bike that had a decent amount of chrome, completely blacking it out. And now I want to put the chrome back on it. So I'm probably going the full 180 again. Um, I just go in phases. Now I actually quite like the chrome. Um, Freddie, a few questions for you. What do you do for a living? Uh, answered that. Number two, what's the best roads you've ridden? Um, the road up to El Tede in Tenerife and the Dolomites, Dolomiti in Italy, mountainous range with ski resorts. It's breathtaking for riding, probably the best I've ever experienced. What was the motorcycle, including test rides, that you had most, the uh, more difficulty returning and why, and the least? Um, okay, so the, the bike that I, I miss most out of all of them, Royal Enfield Classic 500. And the bike I was happiest to give back, oh, probably Ducati Monster. Probably Ducati Monster, the 600cc. I just didn't gel with that bike. Um, but yeah, Classic 500 for one I like most. Next, Freddie. Are you willing to ride around the world or relocate to some other cool place after leaving Tenerife? Absolutely 100%. Monica and I have no plans yet set in stone. We don't have any accommodation when we're back in the UK. We don't even 100% know if we are going back to the UK. So everything is 100% up in the air at the moment. We've got just under two months left here and zero plans. If you had the possibility to choose between the Royal Enfield Continental GT and Moto Guzzi V7 III as a first motorbike, what would you choose and why? I would choose the Moto Guzzi. And that's because it's upright riding position. So uh, as opposed to it being a significantly better bike, I just like the more upright riding position. It means I can tour Europe if I want, I can commute. It's easier for long journeys. So it'd be the Moto Guzzi. If you could only own one bike that could never be changed, what would it be? Triumph Bonneville. Still the Triumph Bonneville. I still love it as much now as I ever did and it does everything. Okay, Freddie, well I have a list of questions. Number one, which country slash city uh, you'll rate the best for riding a motorcycle in Europe? Country, Spain or Italy? I know that Italy is often classed or called God's racetrack. Don't know what happened to my voice there, sorry. I know that Italy is often called God's racetrack, and it's true, the roads are mind-blowing, but I think Spain gives Italy a really, really good run for its money. So, over and above the cities, because they're always a bit crowded, I would say Spain and Italy for driving, or for riding heaven in Europe. Number two, is the new T120 a good bike for someone tall, six feet plus? Yes, absolutely. I still think that the T100's a good bike for six footers, but yeah, the T120 will be perfect for you. Favorite vintage slash classic motorcycle? You know, I'm, I'm probably going to say the 1950s Triumph Thunderbird and also the, the 19, 60s Harleys, those types of things are some of my favorites. And finally, when you have moved, uh, when you have to move out from the current apartment, how come you don't rent another one in Tenerife or in another island? There are plenty of decent ones for around 500 euros. Uh, we're, you know, we're still open-minded, we're still considering it. Um, the one bad thing about the Canaries is getting stuff sent here is a nightmare. I've had things I've been waiting for for four months. So the negative about being here is you are cut off. You are, it's just the way it is. It's, it's a well-known nightmare being here um, that you can't get stuff shipped. So it's, it's hard for some things, but in general, yes, I'm open-minded because this is my favorite place in the world here and I'm delighted to be here and I would seriously consider relocating here permanently. I like it that much. I've requested to do the wrap up standing up because, oh, Monica, yep, you just dodged that in time, because I've lost feeling to my legs uh, because I'm incredibly unbendy. So we'll do the standing up. That is the sun setting over La Gomera, one of the sunset spots on the island. This is Monkey Beach in the area of Costa Deque. We'll wrap, up, we'll wrap it up there. Thank you so much for all of the questions and in general, thank you so much for all of the support, the likes, just watching the videos. It's hugely appreciated. Please do give the video a like if you're happy to. Subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next one.